Recently, I was asked about the concept of a state-level blockchain roadmap, and I'm discussing it with two different government representatives in different parts of the world. But I'm sure the concept I'm about to present here would be relevant to many countries. Hi, my name is Alexey Konosheit, and you're on Blockchain State. I would like to talk about a state or national level blockchain roadmap template that any government can adopt. I must admit that some people may find that some of these ideas are not fully explained, but I prefer this brief format as it allows me to spot the most important ideas. Those interested in going further will find the answers in more than 20 academic papers that I published in international peer-reviewed journals and more than 15 expert opinion articles, and this channel is also devoted to it. Finally, I will mention videos that you may want to watch next. It's not the first time I am involved in blockchain discussions and policy making with governments. I have seen the same mistakes repeated by politicians. They want easy wins. But with no effort, they achieve nothing. The problem is that the blockchain is so fundamentally different that it cannot be just added to the existing economic and governance models. The blockchain changes the whole paradigm. It cannot be applied to the current relationships without rethinking their essence. You cannot put it on the existing centralized socio-technical and socio-economic systems. Centralized and decentralized systems are incompatible. Suppose the blockchain is applied as an auxiliary system on top of a centralized one. It will undermine the whole idea of the blockchain because if a centralized system being mutable and vulnerable underpins the decentralized one, it makes the blockchain vulnerable and useless. A word was invented for it, permissioned or private blockchain, which is a centralized surrogate that doesn't have the quality of an immutable blockchain. You can watch my video, Is Every Chain of Blocks the Blockchain, if you want to know more about it. This brings us to the first question. Does the state or the government need its blockchain? The answer is no. Many politicians tend to think that we, the government, need our own blockchain, so we'll be able to control the blockchain if something goes wrong. This is what I've just said about the paradigm. If you can control the blockchain, it's not the blockchain. The whole point about the blockchain is no one controls it and no one has authority over it. And this is how it remains immutable and hence credible. We regularly observe high-profile attacks on centralized infrastructure that results in personal data leakages and disruptions on Twitter, Facebook, Amazon, Google, you name it. We saw it during the present elections in the US. We saw it last year and this year we are observing bold attacks on the American infrastructure. We see how the Ukrainian electronic public services went down with the beginning of the war. The list of examples is countless. On the other hand, we have an example of Bitcoin and Ditbit that for some reasons hasn't been disrupted since its launch in 2009. There are plenty of other successful examples of the robust decentralized networks. So my answer to governments, the world doesn't need a new blockchain unless you are a new Satoshi Nakamoto or Vitalik Buterin to invent the breakthrough technology. My point is there is no lack of blockchain. There are different options, slow, fast, cheap, expensive, energy extensive and not only cryptocurrency networks and blockchains as platforms for applications with Turing complete smart contracts and not in various cross blockchain protocols. There is a lack of real world breakthrough applications and you will come to understand why they all bump into governments. So the second core question, why should governments bother about blockchain adoption in the economy? Why don't they just let the free markets do it if they need it so much? At the bottom of any economy are property rights. Everything above the monetary and financial systems, the production and so on sit on the pillar of private property. Here I should extend the word property to its full meaning. It includes uh, real estate and movable property or chattels, vehicles, vessels and aircraft, among others. There are also corporate rights and intellectual property. It all underpins the economy. If we agree with the statement that the digital economy is the next step in evolution, 
The only way to embrace the transformation is to digitize these rights. And the snag is all these rights reside in various public registries. The land registry, the registry of cars, boats, planes, the registry of companies and business names, the registry of trademarks and patents, and so on. They are entangled with old-fashioned regulations, red tape, that impede innovations that come with blockchain technology. Smart contracts, tokens, DAOs, DAPs, DeFi, and so on. And because governments are responsible for these registries, the shift to blockchain technology is possible only with the government and regulatory changes. Some people can object. Hold on, what about security tokens? Can it become the way to digitize the economy? For this to happen, the government doesn't need to change a lot, but apply conventional bureaucratic regulations. Frankly, do you think it will get to mass adoption? What would you personally prefer? To be a rightful owner or a co-owner of a property lawfully recorded in a distributed ledger, or to be the owner of a security token that somehow represents someone's legal promises to provide an economic interest in their property. And you don't control the tokens because they are in the custody of a service provider and they keep saying it is decentralized. I don't think that some clunky security tokens are a scalable solution that will trigger a digital transformation. The only answer is the digitization of rights and interests. Digitization of public property registries where these rights reside and digitization of public services and governance that underpins it. And I'm sorry to disappoint those who shot quick and easy wins. Let me explain the word digital in this context. This is not a synonym for electronic. In many countries, registries are already electronic, but they are not digital. The difference is that people don't have access to these electronic records. An owner cannot exercise their right and authorize a transaction directly on the registry. It is mediated through registrars, conveyancers, notaries, and other third parties. A public agency such as a land registry office is a third party between, for example, a seller or a buyer. Digital means the owner has direct access to their record of ownership on the ledger through asymmetric cryptography, where user's public key plays the role of an address to which the record is attached, and the relevant private key is used to authorize a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. Peer-to-peer -peer means without an intermediary. With blockchain, where such a digital record resides, you don't need anyone to facilitate a transaction. In the industry, such a digital record is called a token. It was impossible before blockchains. Centralized technology is vulnerable. It cannot cope with millions of people committing transactions directly on the registry. No technology could ensure the security of records except the blockchain. Even now, when some countries have electronic conveyance systems for real estate transactions, electronic means not how transactions are committed, but how the third parties, service providers, communicate. The electronic registry stands behind the wall of intermediaries, registrars, conveyancers, lawyers, and so on, that validate and verify the transaction multiple times before it gets registered in the central database. The bureaucracy and cumbersome legal procedures are there for a purpose. It's the only possible form of existence for a centralized system. And it's a bottleneck for innovations that come with blockchain. Automated smart contracts, DAOs, DApps, DeFi, it all bumps against the wall of ineffective and sluggish centralized socioeconomic system. The era of the digital economy will begin with the digitalization of property rights and through the removal of bureaucracy from public registries. But I am not offering to abandon the existing registries. They work well in many countries. They are just unable to ensure further progress. If politicians want to be on the safe side, they should let people choose between two systems running in parallel. Not the blockchain on top of the centralized system, but two independent systems connected with each other with a bridge protocol to exclude double spending. So people can choose either one or another.
those who trust the conventional system, they can stay with it. Those who want to enjoy all the benefits of the innovation will get this opportunity to transfer the records of their property rights to blockchain. And we have a good historical reference here. Australia has been running two land systems in parallel for 150 years. Only in 1999 did they decide to do away with the old land system inherited from England in favor to the Torrens Land Title Registry. What blockchain is right for public registries? The answer is a blockchain agnostic application across multiple blockchains. Not a government, but people should decide which blockchain to use. Only the free market can ensure that another Satoshi Nakamoto or Vitalik Buterin will create new technologies in the future. The government must ensure fair competition and rules for admission of credible blockchain technologies for transactions with property rights. I described it in my academic paper Cross-Blockchain Protocol for Public Registries and I will record a video about it in the future. If I have made the video by the time you are watching this, please find the link to it in the description or subscribe if you don't want to miss it in the future. So the full answer to the first question, a government doesn't need a new blockchain. The government needs to develop a blockchain infrastructure, which includes cross-blockchain and digital governance protocols for blockchain estate registry where people will be able to transfer their property rights on land, cars, boats, corporate rights, intellectual property, and everything I mentioned before. In conclusion, I promise to elaborate on the roadmap template. I offer to develop following five components. A blockchain estate registry, which is a set of digital governance and compliance protocols as a layer above a bundle of reliable blockchains. A bundle of blockchain tied with a cross-blockchain protocol to ensure interoperability and fair competition of technologies. A digital title solution or a title token technology as the registry's core element. A digital identity solution so the counterparties can commit transactions remotely without the need to meet each other in person. And a digital payment solution as the blockchain transaction must exchange title for something in the digital form. The existing banking system is also a third party that is reasonable to replace with a digital solution if we want an efficient economy. I know that this is a new territory for governments and politicians. It cannot happen in one night. We need pilots, supervised experiments and regulatory sandboxes to untie from the existing impediments. Public agencies are not longer need to maintain infrastructure for decentralized registries as this is the definition for a decentralized distributed ledger. But they are not detached from governance, as some may conclude. The public bodies will exercise their powers through the protocols of digital governance on blockchain applications. I described it in the series of videos on this channel, as well as the full understanding to which extent this system can be decentralized, just in case someone naively believes it is possible to do away with all third parties and intermediaries with blockchain. So you may want to watch next jurisdictions on blockchain, how to design a blockchain land registry with title tokens and certificate tokens, a video about a better system for digital identities, what is wrong with EIDS and how to develop a better system, how to regulate DAOs in two parts, and is every chain is the blockchain. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and hit the bell icon to follow my channel. See you in the next video.